the video topic of today is overseas Indians as dysfunctional living in their lives. For example, the Desis in North America, from the ones in Canada to the ones in America mainland, there is a huge difference between the ones in Canada are way behind to the ones in America are living fuller, complete, absolute lives. Same can be said for the ones in UK. The reason for that is there's so few resources that a group of family of six to eight lives in lives in the same space whereas the ones in America have a larger abundant space to enjoy fuller lives individually. A very famous example of this abstract group of based on ethnicity is the group of MQM from Pakistan who sticks together rather than spread out and cancel each other out. Then there is also the issue of all the fields of academics. What are they capable of in sports? In online dating with whites? Because the majority of these populations live with whites in North America, in America, Canada and UK. In achieving high test scores in SATs, GMAT, O or A levels within the American British standards if compared thoroughly on an individual basis again on another topic that's why people such as Salman Rushdie were created to control the colonial populations not on merit people as third rate gossip mongers who read the National Enquirer magazine and have nothing to contribute to the Western society a failure of their own mindset. Such is the living conditions when considered are these individuals to groups of individuals within a family are living in such boundaries of their house with occasionally stopover from poor immigrants who go to just to visit the local grocery store not even the executive class for average daisies living apart from whites. Nothing more, nothing less. To go for them to visit downtown is a big ask if for most, if not at all, of them to starting a conversation at par equal level with whites is a big no-no. Back to the British Raj or the colonial ways or better as they say the slave Raj on behalf of the Arabs. In other words, most of these immigrants, they come to Western nations and then they stick to their own family's house bound, boundary walls, yet they do not even make an effort due to finances to going or paying a visit to downtown or striking a conversation with whites because they are so low in empathy to socialization skills. Then on another topic, they are limited to their inner little narrow-minded circles with huge inferiority complexes suffering with in themselves, to keeping them to themselves, not to mention picking on their own kind on community brothers or sisters in relation to natives picking on them. They don't use their minds to innovate or improve but remain on the suppression submissive personality characteristics of their own kinds. There is a larger city within several smaller slave one areas so to speak in the West in these communities not to undermine a slave area in any way or name tagging 
to a ghetto. In other words, just to elaborate on this point forward, they fail to assimilate with other community or different racial, interracial socialization just for the sake of sticking together and the, the leader of the house keeps pressurizing the inferior individuals. They make no effort to go outside of their ghetto as a fresh of breath air to, to see a new side of life. In other words, they do not attempt to go to from their ghetto to another part of the city to strike a fresh breath of air. Now how about having options as a younger teenager living in the West to having options as in middle age or having options as a settler voicing your opinions in high ranking positions and lastly options as an old senior citizen. There are none for these individuals and also if one looks in deeper into their problems if we implement no voice of such individuals in any local newspaper or popular culture accepted by society they are just a bunch of rats from those from India. Anyway the wind blows they t turn to it accept it which is another failure simply. Just to elaborate on this point is the core reason because back in India everybody the whole concept of the society believes in submissiveness and and absorbing each other. They divide their own local communities with little compensation to any little value of importance given by the original citizens of country. For example, if a Mexican Hispanic has to deal in some way with an Argentinian, then he will certainly have a conflicting issues with him. However, if a Colombian has issues with a Brazilian, then more conflicts will be born due to economic development in Brazil instead of neglect in Colombia due to Mr. Hugo Chavez. But in any way given prospering groups of population in California to Florida and Nevada, there are outnumbering pockets of well-to-do Hispanics in every administrative to executive positions in Los Angeles local government. Now let's look, take a look at another angle. What happened to the Indians of Silicon Valley? See, there aren't any to begin with. There was no brain drain as once thought in 1980s. There was zero Nobel Peace Prize awarded to, on surface of merit to science discipline to Indians. Straight up. The Silicon Valley has to offer as as most favored nation employees as if a white man does not want to take on the job position so an Indian person will be filled simply. No talent, no merit, nothing. It's like they are emerging emergency race to trust on taking a duplicate as a role of a loyal servant. Nothing more, nothing less. That also, Queen Elizabeth taught English in return. They didn't capitalize, contribute anything else besides the language factor. In other words, the subcontinent populations have not innovative, inventive, contributing to the society as a whole of Earth. They have the least inventions when we take a look at Western civilization. Back to our topic at hand, whereas the Hispanics or South Americans to Far East Asian countries, the successful businessmen to entrepreneur are doing a lot for their own communities and the building block of poor immigrants from their countries coming over by providing bank loans, not from North American banks, but from their original root country to having a good record in history of North America, which is called contribution to the system. However, the poor Indian 
arriving, having no financial background, to fall back in bad times or urgent cases, drop in the bucket to gain anything at all. And they are doing squat to help their communities. There is no bucket set, only a deep, deep well, never ending forever fall.